Welcome to the Mind of Business Success Podcast. I'm your host, Alicia Kramer. Our guest today is Deborah Johnson. Let's talk about change. Oh, all the changes in life and how to navigate those changes. Welcome to the show, Deborah. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here. Always a privilege. Thank you. Let's start by talking a little bit about your business, what you do, so our listeners have some context, a little bit of a frame of reference for your background, which is quite extensive. <laughs> so let's start there. Well, um, yes, I have a big background in music, of course, and that was has been my career. I expanded my career into being an author and a speaker, uh, but a lot of music. So I have played headline events, have composed uh, three musicals, full musicals, and hundreds of songs, and I've uh, been an entertainer, still work for Disney, and but I just, you know, part-time of what I do, it's one of the things I do, multiple areas of business, and kind of managing those, and I'll be coming out with my sixth book, uh, you know, so there's a lot of little areas that I do, and, and putting online courses on, but I really focus on those that are at mid-career or at the half time of life, officially over the age of 40. Uh, for those of you listening, it comes very fast, uh, but for all of the change that happens and for women now, many women are having children a little bit later and families growing, um, including we've got a couple sons, they're having kids later, <laughs> later and later. So but it, um, you know, all of that plays in when you are ready to say, you know, what's next? And those are the questions I like to help people with. And, and a big part of this, Alicia, is what you focus on is your mindset. Let's go there. Because when we're talking about 40, and, and I'm, I'm 42. So right. I've gone, gone through that sort of questioning, right? You know, your, your priorities shift a little bit as you get older. And I actually have, um, you know, I have my, my son is 13. My daughter is four. So I have a young, you know, fairly young family for my age as well. And some stepchildren that are both adults. One is nearing her thirties or three, um, <laughs> but you, you got a lot to handle. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I think of when I think of 40 is as a, as a child, uh, my stepfather had a huge family there. I think 12 kids in his family and Anytime someone would turn 40, they'd have this big party with all of these over the hill balloons. <laughs> and I remember my association as a child was like, wow, that's pretty old. <laughs> it felt like that, didn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it really did. And so it's, it's kind of funny because for those of us that are you know, over our twenties, because I think, you know, your mindset in your twenties still, you're still kind of maturing into yourself. And then I remember I had this, this association with 30. Well, when I hit 30, then people are going to finally take me seriously. And that's when I really started to take myself seriously as what ended up happening because of that mindset. Now, we're talking about individuals who are recognizing that they're feeling something within themselves, right? Life's not the same as in your twenties. It's not the same as in your thirties. And you know that it's going to continue to evolve and change because you've got all of those experiences <laughs> to, right. to show you that. So what is the mindset that you're seeing your clients come to you with, what is the mindset that they have that needs to be sort of massaged maybe a little bit to support them in those new endeavors for this new stage of their life? I think a big one is confidence and false confidence. What are you basing your confidence on? And, and that's especially for women, I think. And my audience is not just women. Um, I have 
men reading my articles and my books and, and all of that. Um, I came out with the first uh, women at halftime book. I just saw there was another one out, but <laughs> that mine came out some years ago. And, and but it, it, it really talks about um, our building our confidence and our purpose as we, as we build upon that. And what are you building that on? And so there, there's a strong foundation and that's where your mindset comes in on your respect and your, and your character and your faith. Uh, that plays a big part of my life as well. And just being grounded because these changes, you can lose your confidence so quickly, especially with social media. It's like there, you can look on there and you can think everyone else is doing so, so well, but really it's a sham. It's like a facade because I've written you know, musicals and done stage sets. And, and, and I know what you can do with some of those facades, but that's what happens so much. And we compare ourselves. We, 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 we start trashing our own worth many times. And so I think that really plays into part of this or else you go into it with overconfidence and you kind of fool everybody but yourself. So, you know, making sure that you personally are where you want to be. And I've made some decisions and, you know, this sort of imposter syndrome and all of this kind of coming through. I mean, I've, I've struggled with those same things. You know, I can play for hours and hours on a piano and talk to you, sing and have a full on conversation. It is like swimming, like water, like for me, but I still struggle sometimes when I'm putting out new projects and when I'm going, you know, doing something new, you write a new song, you know, is anybody going to like it? Is it going to cut through? Is it, you know, writing a new book? Is it going to cut through it? Is it going to help anybody actually help anybody? Well, I have to be, you know, convicted in my own heart and convinced that it's worth doing it. You know, I told my editor, I said, I can't believe I'm writing another book. And she said, you had more to say. And I said, I, did, I do. I do. I really think this message is resonating and that's why I'm writing another book. So I, I think you have to, within yourself, understand that I'm a creative soul. I have to get back to making things, making sure they're simple and easy to understand. And, you know, for not only for myself, but for others, but you have to be, understand that your conviction of what you're doing is the right way to go because the moment you start thinking well everybody else is doing this and now they're starting to copy I mean it brings back that time my father had had was part of a tool company uh, they were nationally distributed they were the main cement tools in the United States well when China copied the product completely they put them out of business and we go through some of that same thing thinking oh I'm done I'm done when all of a sudden other people are doing more than you are, but you're not, you're not. So that is a huge mindset. I think that we all have to overcome. That was a long answer, Alicia, but I, <laughs> there were actually a lot of really valuable takeaways in that answer. You addressed a couple of things that most people can relate to. So you talked a little bit about imposter syndrome and I've said it many, many times. So anybody listening to this podcast who has been a long-term listener, they're like, oh, there she goes again. But right. it's so important for us to remember that that really is a natural phenomenon because when we are reaching for something that is new and therefore unknown to our subconscious mind, our subconscious mind doesn't have the frame of reference. We're not like the fish in water. We're outside of our element. We're in unknown territory. And that creates a lot of fears, doubts, insecurities. It triggers old limiting beliefs, and it creates all sort of emotional, negative emotional upheaval. Right. But we have to get in touch with that other piece that you said, right? It is recognizing that we are these divine creative beings and that it is our inner calling that is driving for more expansion to go out, to create, to create whatever your unique work of art is, whether that is your product, it's your service. It's simply, you know, being the you know, the CEO or the CMO of your company and driving that growth. How are you called to 
be the creative being that you are and understand that that's a beautiful, wonderful, divine thing. And that other people also are divine creators. And so when you see someone else doing their creative thing, that does not necessarily mean that you're just like everybody else or that you can't be successful in your endeavor. But now one of the things that I think is a real obstacle, and I'm sure you encounter this in the work that you do with your clients as well, is are you really dialed into your right path or are you like the manufacturer in China that's just sort of stealing everybody's ideas and trying to make a quick buck from that? Because it's not an emotionally sustainable state when we're not really locked into and congruent with what our heart desires. So I'm going to hand the mic back over to you. And I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. That's a great one. A great one. When I was first getting into my speaking career, uh, I was told uh, pick a lane. You know, you need to be in one, you know, you need to narrow, narrow, narrow. And that's very true for many, you know, when you're more specific and more and more specific, specific, it's a hard word to kind of come out with, especially as an artist. Um, But I felt like, you know, I'm on a freeway. I have all of these arms here. And it has taken a bit for me to really narrow down my mission. And once I narrow down my mission and my purpose, I can have multiple lanes. And that is very, very strong. And it's the reason, you know, even in my music products, there's still the same mission is to help people moving forward in their life, to give them materials that they can learn from, that they can move forward in their life. And that that sort of mission it is very congruent with everything that I do, but it's taken me a while to get there, to be honest, because I, you know, kind of floundered around and I was told, you know, you need to be more specific, you need to be narrower and, 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 okay, are you just women? Are you just this kind of life? And I said, you know, people are at all these different stages of life. And so, you know, the last book I had come out with as, as far as our, um, this interview, as of this interview, um, not my brand new one coming out, but it was an allegory and it's a self-help book in disguise, but it was so creative and so fun, but I made sure the messaging really came through again, that you can get to your hero mountain. That's a trademark. And that's part of what my women at halftime book is all about in getting to your hero mountain. And, but many people are having a problem even getting there. And that's why I'm writing this next book is there they're still stuck in that area. They're not using their skills. They're not using their resources, their experience, all of this, because they're at that point of life when they're asking what's next and thinking, what am I worth now? I'm too old. I, you know, I'm not relevant. I'm not, you know, what can I really do? They were always hiring somebody different or they're past. I've been passed over so many times and there's that confidence But we need people with that experience, with those skills, with some common sense. And as we as we look at our world, it feels like, you know, I have have kids that now uh, when I look at the kids graduating from high school, even from college, I think they're looking younger and younger. You know, as you said, your span of, of kids And but they need people that have that experience that have, you know, I want to work until my 80s. If people will listen to anything I say, I just I just think this is not time to quit. It's it's a great time of life all the way through here. And I, you know, I'm fortunate I got the good genes. I can keep going as far as, you know, what we do uh, being in front. But it's it's very important. I, I don't know if that fully answered your question, but narrowing down, you know, inspiring and mine is an inspirational message music is also inspirational when I sit and play as I'm going to be doing this evening at you know doing a Disney engagement I am inspiring people I'm I'm lifting them up in some way and so that's what my materials do they lift people up they get you to a place where you can really climb for yourself I love that it's beautiful and we 
all have the ability to feel for what I like to refer to as the essence. It's like the, the vibrational, emotional essence of who we are and what we want and the type of person we want to be, how we want to inspire or influence or have a positive effect on others. And it's, it's interesting because I actually have had quite a few guests on. I just had a, a recent interview, which uh, may be out now when people are listening to this, where it, it gets hammered on niche down, niche down, niche down, be super specific. And um, that has been a challenge for me as well, because a lot of my specifics for my marketplace are psychographics more than demographics. And so I've been working in this capacity as a mindset coach and hypnotherapist for over a decade. And I specialize in working with small business owners, but my psychographic really is the, the key element. And that is not always easy to articulate to someone. So they're looking for psychographic niching right? And that creates sometimes this constrictive box for some of us that feels very inauthentic. And when we're trying to live our life, create our business, and we're incongruent, and we're out of alignment, that creates problems. We're not as inspired. We're not as motivated. We're not as clear. We feel inauthentic. We feel like we're trying to be something or someone that we're not, or we're trying to speak to someone that doesn't necessarily really resonate with us. And I, for a very long time, have been an advocate for, you get advice from people, but you have to follow your own heart. And what we're talking about here is no matter what stage you're at in your life or in your business, that type of clarity is really the heart of where our confidence comes from also. Um, I'm actually coming out with a new book as well. And so mine is very much centered around this concept. And I love that, you know, we're all doing our own thing in our own unique way to inspire positive transformation within others. Um, I want to shift gears a little bit because I want to speak to you as a serial entrepreneur, someone who has been there, done that. And you mentioned a little bit about you've bumped up against some of your own imposter syndrome and you've had some of your own mindset shifts. And I'm curious if there is a specific mindset challenge that you've personally witnessed yourself working through and overcoming in order to get to where you are today? Well, I think uh, for me, it's a lot of times that I don't feel like I'm taken seriously. That is a mindset. Um, as an artist, you don't feel like you're taken seriously in business because I'm an artist. I'm a creator. And, you know, I'm part of the Grammy organization. I have been for years as a, you know, as a nearest voter and all of that. But there's a bunch of artists and we're all kind of in that, but it's, it's creative. You just see these creative projects coming out year after year after year. So then when I started bumping up in my speaking, I was the president of our national speaking organization in our LA chapter for a year. And you start bumping up uh, against these corporate and people that have been in that field. Now I've taught every level from, you know, as, a, as an instructor, even through graduate school. So I have taught at colleges, at universities, um, throughout because raised a family at the same time, I've done a combination of things. So I, and it's usually been in music, music business. And uh, so, but I've not been in the corporate setting. I've not been in that sort of box. So all of a sudden that sort of comparison along with the pick a lane was for me, I'm thinking, am I, you know, I know these are my people, but, but just, I'm kind of a, a square hole here. I'm just, I'm different. And, and when I saw other musicians that were a part of that sort of group, 
they weren't really moving ahead in their business how I was moving ahead. They weren't writing books. They weren't putting out courses. They weren't doing any of that. They were just still playing their music and kind of doing a little bit of that while they were speaking. And, and I felt like I'm much more driven than that. I have, I have other things to say and I want to make sure they're marketed. All of my stuff is all, you know, in multiple versions on Amazon and they can get audiobooks and they can get the ebook, they can get everything. So, you know, I was more specific. They can get my sheet music. I have all the, you know, hundreds of copies of sheet music they can download. All of that stuff because I'm driven that way, but it still felt like a square hole in, you know, up against the CFO, the financial people, the people that were doing all of this, this work in a specific area that they were you know, working with attorneys and they were working with all of, because they've had all of that experience or that, that, that uh, sort of background, even in corporate. And I've never had a corporate background and I was hired out of college right off, you know, into the educational system. And then I continued to, to tour musically too, but it was, it, that was my, that was where I was. So I think some of that Alicia was, you know, me getting to the place where I was confident in what I was doing, what my gifts are doing, because I will, I tell you, people look and see what I do and they say, oh, I'd love to be able to do what you do someday. And I'm thinking, really? <laughs> because I've been striving to do, you know, to make sure that people are taking me seriously and that, you know, because I can do what I can do in music, it is not because I'm just some sort of fluff brain out there. No, it's because I'm trained as a concert pianist. I have memorized 100, 100 page concertos. I've competed on the, you know, the national level, all of that. It takes a lot to be able to do that, but it takes even more to be able to format a business into a way that it's going to grow. So it, it took some of that. And, you know, I'm still discovering new tools. We talked about automation earlier new tools that will help save me time and that I can multiply the messaging of what I'm doing. So, and again, I'm going to come back to, I hope that answers your question, <laughs> but it, <laughs> we all have those things that we're bumping up against. And sometimes we have a uh, more of like a core issue that we are seemingly consistently bumping up against and working through. And sometimes we have those smaller, more singular things that we bump up against. And when we shift those things, it just becomes a non-issue. Right. The message that I hope to always convey through this work that I'm doing with this particular podcast is it's natural, it's normal, it's okay, we're all human. It doesn't matter how many millions of dollars you've generated in revenue. It doesn't matter how many awards you've won. It doesn't matter if you are a stay-at-home mom who was an amazing cookie baker. And now you are stepping out into the world and saying, Hey, I can teach you how to make cookies. It doesn't matter where you are. We're all on the journey. There's that cliche. I, I, I'll call it cliche, right? Some people will say we're all created equal. And then other people say, no, we're not all created equal, but where we are all equal is we're all human beings right. and we're all sort of dealing with this wacky stuff that gets conditioned into our mind. And it is our job to be mindful enough to do our inner work and clean that stuff up so we can be the best version of ourselves. Well said. And when you talk about inner work, that's one of the most important parts of my life. Uh, when I, I get up very early, I always say I was born on a dairy car farm, so I get up with the cows. That's what I say. <laughs> They're always up. So I, I'm up early. Um, but the first thing I do is time to do a brief journal and reading and reflecting. 
and I happen to uh, love being in scripture. So I, I, I do that. I spent a little time, maybe about 20 minutes. I get them to my computer a little bit and then I work out. But all of that helps to clear the mind. It helps to really be centered in what I'm doing. And I think that's extremely important because what you do individually will impact everyone else that you work with. And, you know, I've been around, I've led small groups clear from when I was in high school. And there are so many people that need you to be you and to, to be able to talk, to be able to, you know, bounce ideas off. I've had a virtual happy hour since I started it, you know, when we had the shutdowns. Well, I have some people that did not want to quit. They said, no. We need, we still need this time with you. So, you know, I've made it a little bit less off, you know, often now because of my schedule, but it, I think we need each other. And you personally being able to be centered and however, whatever you put your faith in, whether it's nature, whether it, it is God, whether it is people, whether it's, you know, whatever it is that you have, you have some space to be able to reflect and everybody has something. There's some sort of vacuum inside that you've, you've got to be able to fill that and to be able to be centered yourself. And you had, um, had mentioned uh, with you, you know, you've got this very serious, you know, type A, I'm definitely type A. People think I'm an extrovert. I'm not, I'm very introverted. <laughs> I work but I'm an intentional extrovert because I'm an entertainer. So, but the, but that sort of focus, uh, you need to mitigate that with being really centered as well, because what you end up doing with that focus is you end up doing, 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 and all of a sudden you're going, oh, oh, <laughs> where am I? So anyway, that's, uh, I, I think that centeredness and that, you know, the, the piece that you have that you're, and, and it's, it's a good evaluation too. Am I doing really where I'm called and what my mission is? Absolutely. All right, Deborah, you have to share with our listeners how they can connect with you and anywhere you would like to direct them to. Oh, very nice of you. Um, I don't come on these just to promote, but I would love to connect with people. I have a weekly article that comes out. It's free on my newsletter. I think I'm going to sneeze here. I'm so sorry because I hate to do that when we're on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I think I held it back. Um, but you can get that. Uh, I have a couple different websites. Of course, my speaking website, Deborah Johnson Speaker. But you can get to this little page. It's goals for your life. That's all one word. Goalsforyourlife.com forward slash newsletter. And I'd love you to be able to take advantage of that. And when you go to that website, there's always some sort of free webinar or, you know, I give away a lot of free information and materials that comes through that little newsletter. Uh, I don't spam you and I'm going to send you tons of them. It comes once a week, actually twice a week because I have a podcast as well. People love the music, DJ Works Music. I've had that website for a very long time and there's lots of material on there and you can see all these old videos of me uh, performing. And uh, so those are always fun. I shouldn't say old, but uh, they're, I'm not doing as many headline uh, events now. So you can see some of the ones from the past. And I have a great double piano show that I've done for years too that's great fun. So yeah, there's there's all of those spaces, but mainly if you can get on my newsletter, you will get all of the current uh, sort of uh, things that are going on. And I do have something that I open up for individuals twice a year, my Hero Mountain, that won't be available until probably later June of 2023, again, to open up. But I have a lot of other courses and everything you can get at any time. I'm not hard sell. I just provide material that will help you move ahead and I've got lots of it. So there's, there's plenty to pursue. I want to thank you so much, Deborah, for being with us today. Well, I thank you, Alicia. I know how much work it is to do all of the podcasts and everything that you are doing and you're a hero. So thank you for doing what you are doing. Oh, well, thank you. And of course, I have to thank all of our listeners. We're doing this for you. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so. And until next time, we will see you in the next episode.